Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site, BettingAngle.us, a free site. It is Monday, July the 12th, 2021. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk about this spectacular trash talk that's going on right now. Before this Errol Spence, Manny Pacquiao fight. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, I suspect that Floyd Mayweather understands that when people look back at his era, some of them, perhaps a sizable portion of them, are going to believe that the era belonged to Manny Pacquiao. Right? Floyd understands, I believe, that while he's respected Manny Pacquiao is loved. While Floyd won their head-to-head -head bout, right, people believe that Pacquiao had the more interesting fights throughout his career. A case in point is both of them fought Oscar De La Hoya, right? Floyd wins a split decision. Manny Pacquiao gets one of history's more memorable stoppages. Right? Well, let me just say, <clears throat> Floyd has come out and has started praising Errol Spence. Floyd believes Errol Spence is going to beat Manny Pacquiao. I don't, just so you know my bias. But Floyd believes Errol Spence is going to beat Manny Pacquiao. Floyd has offered to give Spence some pointers to beat Manny Pacquiao. In response, Pacquiao has thrown down one of the best trash talks in recent memory. Pacquiao has said he's not concerned about Floyd helping Errol Spence because, quite frankly, Errol Spence is better than Floyd Mayweather. Manny went on and said that Errol Spence could teach Floyd certain things in terms of fighting what Manny calls toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Right? It's really good trash talk. So you can imagine now, they're going to be, right, some tension before the fight. I'm guessing Floyd Mayweather might be at some of the pre-fight events. I'm guessing many, like us here, right now, are going to look back at exactly what happened during Floyd's victory over Manny Pacquiao. Now, let me just say this, and I know it's counterintuitive, might sound negative to some, but Errol Spence is around 30 years old, right? I don't believe that a great fighter like Floyd, and I consider Floyd to be a great fighter. Floyd's one of the best I've ever seen. I don't believe a great fighter like Floyd could teach Errol Spence at this late stage in Errol Spence's career Floyd's defense. That's the kind of thing that, in my opinion, you have to start teaching a young guy when he's a teenager. So that by the time that young guy's in his early 20s, he already knows the approach to defense that Floyd had, right? I don't believe, I think it's just too late. Name the fighter, Errol Spence, Anthony Joshua. I just think it's too late in their careers for them to suddenly learn the secret sauce of let's say a Floyd Mayweather's defensive construct. Let me also say too that I just don't see any way that Errol Spence will be able to fight the fight that Floyd fought against Manny Pacquiao and have the pacing, the spacing, the defense against Manny Pacquiao. It's just not going to happen. So what I want people to do, you know, because understand, Floyd Mayweather is able to slow down Manny Pacquiao. I want you to think of Pacquiao. 
I want you to think of the Pacquiao who beat Oscar De La Hoya. The fast hands, the high volume, the flurries, right? The energy where Manny could just come in and flash a lot of volume and you felt that there was action almost every second of that Manny Pacquiao, Oscar De La Hoya fight. That's the Pacquiao we know, right? He's bouncing around the ring. It's hard for an opponent to keep track of him. He comes in, he flashes the hand speed, he dictates the pace of the fight. You can't control him. You don't have the energy level. He's just too active for you. Well, understand what Mayweather was able to do. I consider it one of the best accomplishments I've seen in boxing. Mayweather was able to take away Pacquiao's energy. He was able to take away Pacquiao's volume. And he was able to do it without throwing a lot of jabs. He was able to do it without running. He's moving away at times from Pacquiao, but he's not running. He's not up on his toes, staying away for 12 rounds. No, Mayweather, very high accuracy is engaging Manny Pacquiao. And he does it in such a way that Pacquiao, even when Pacquiao needed rounds, could not get through Mayweather's defense. Even when Pacquiao gets Mayweather up against the ropes in his flashing hand speed, he has a problem finding Mayweather even in those moments. He has a problem landing clean shots on Mayweather. The Pacquiao straight left hand has a problem finding Mayweather every round of the 12 rounds, right? That's different than the Errol Spence construct, where Errol Spence was fighting Sean Porter, a guy who sparred with Manny, right? And you'll notice that that fight is rough and tumble. The pacing of that fight is uneven and you know, uncontrolled from the opening bell. So what I want people to do is to look at one of the best rounds I've seen against Manny Pacquiao. It's a masterpiece round. If you're into movement, if you're into a guy taking away the other guy's weapons, if you want to see a round where a guy is able to hang around the pocket drop his hands, right, toward the last 20 seconds of the round, actually pursue Manny Pacquiao. Drain Pacquiao's energy. Make it a slow round. In a round that Pacquiao himself knew he needed to win the fight then what I want you to do is to, and I'm putting the link in my favorites folder here, right? And it's gonna be a slow down link because believe it or not, someone posted this round online and they're rescoring it, they call it, right? Now the person who posted it, I don't know what round they're watching. Folks, this round is shocking just off the lack of energy. Just off how much Floyd Mayweather was able to slow down the round. Just off how much Floyd was able to fight his fight against the fighter Manny Pacquiao who makes it almost impossible to imagine, much less do. It's round 11 of Mayweather versus Pacquiao. And you're going to see Mayweather, whose defense is such that Pacquiao throws shots and Mayweather just leans back. Mayweather makes Pacquiao look one-handed. That straight left doesn't exist here. Pacquiao knows he can't land it. Floyd even is deep enough at times in the pocket to hit Pacquiao with uppercuts before moving around. Floyd looks unrushed. Understand. The score on the telecast 
has Pacquiao behind before this round starts by three or more rounds. In other words, Pacquiao had to realize that arguably in the biggest fight of his career, in a fight that's a reference point for the era, in a fight that boxing fans waited years for, here is Pacquiao behind against Floyd. He can't catch Floyd. He understands it's futile. Trying to just, you know, raise room temperature, throw caution to the wind. Pacquiao's looking for an opening when he does dive into the pocket. Mayweather's able to pivot away. You'll notice that Mayweather against Manny Pacquiao. Think about the guys who had faster hand speed than Manny Pacquiao. Are there any? Here you have Floyd against Manny Pacquiao, unafraid to go lean on the ropes, unafraid to be in the corner. Understand, Floyd's keeping Pacquiao away with movement, but he's not running. It's not a jab, folks. He's not throwing a jab and having to land the jab to keep Pacquiao outside. No, Mayweather's just moving. Look at the change of direction. But yet Mayweather's not running. This is an Ali movement where Ali is <coughs> on his toes throwing a jab, moving away from you. This is Mayweather actually circling the pocket, not throwing a jab. When Pacquiao jumps in, Mayweather's accurate with power shots, left hook, straight right hand. Folks, this is a well-behaved round. There's no urgency. You wouldn't even know. It's round 11, and Pacquiao's already down by three or more rounds. You wouldn't even know. Pacquiao needs the round. Right, Mayweather looks like he knows what Pacquiao is going to throw before he throws it. Mayweather makes Pacquiao look like a one-handed fighter. Right, Pacquiao at one point comes in and Mayweather just looks at him and shakes his head a little bit. That's not going to be, that's not how I see the pacing of the Errol Spence fight. Spence is going to have to throw his jab a bit. How else is he going to keep Manny Pacquiao off of him? Right? There's going to be frantic energy just like there was in the Sean Porter fight. Because Spence can't move like Mayweather. Understand, a lot of boxing has nothing to do with punches. Right? Mayweather is a guy who you start to move, he's able to move. You have to recalibrate. You can't even throw the punch because Mayweather's no longer where you thought he was when you thought about throwing the punch. Right? The Errol Spence Pacquiao fight is going to be nothing like the Mayweather Pacquiao fight. There's nothing Floyd can do in talking to Errol Spence to make Errol Spence's coming match look like his masterpiece over Manny Pacquiao. The ultimate insult in the 11th round, and it's the ultimate insult, is that in a round that Pacquiao needed to win, a round that Mayweather wins by a wide margin, forget the Forget the ridiculous score on the video that I have here where the person is trying to, you know, rescore the round. I don't know what round they're looking at. The ultimate insult happens toward the end of the round when you notice Mayweather actually decides he's going to own the pocket. So I want you to look at the last 20 seconds of the round, right? This is the round Pacquiao needed. 
Mayweather, after moving around, after slowing Pacquiao down, after killing Pacquiao's volume, after hitting Pacquiao with power shots, right, decides to bend his legs and move into the pocket, he immediately gets Pacquiao up on the ropes. Right? Immediately gets Pacquiao up on the ropes. In other words, Mayweather against Manny Pacquiao, a guy who overwhelms people with speed and power. A guy who fighters like Lucas Matisse, who Danny Garcia is on record as saying hits harder than Errol Spence. Right? Lucas Matisse couldn't even get into the pocket against Manny Pacquiao. Right? Pacquiao's moving around. There's too much hand speed. Matisse's confused. Matisse ends up getting stopped early. Here you're watching Mayweather after he wins a round. Just waltz into the pocket against Manny Pacquiao. And is able to back up Pacquiao, get his back up against the ropes. Right? Mayweather's performance against Pacquiao is the result of Mayweather's focus on his defense, on his timing, on his accuracy, and his development of a fight style that did not rely on him being high volume. Mayweather had great defense when he was in the Olympics, for crying out loud. Right now, Errol Spence, I give him credit, this is not the Danny Garcia fight. Errol Spence, using a jab, was able to keep Danny Gar excuse me, was able to keep Mikey Garcia outside. Right, folks, Floyd doesn't even have to use a jab. Mayweather's accuracy is such you know, around 50% on power shots. Mayweather's accuracy is such, and his movement is such, that guys are afraid to jump inside on him. Right, so, you'll hear a lot in the news about, oh, Floyd is helping Errol Spence. Right, folks, you don't pick up a new skill set between fights at 30 years old. That's, that's just not how things are in a sport where, you know, the bullets will start flying. You're going to revert to muscle memory, muscle memory from the career and habits you've built from a teenager up until you were 30 years old, right? Just like Malik Scott is not going to be able to teach Deontay Wilder an entirely new approach to boxing since Wilder's in his 30s now and Malik Scott just showed up as his trainer. I don't believe Floyd Mayweather, who beat Manny Pacquiao, masterful performance, is going to be able to say anything to Errol Spence that will be able to have Spence fight Pacquiao with the spacing and the pacing and the success that Floyd Mayweather had against Manny Pacquiao. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. If you disagree, please leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.